Hello and welcome to game one between Lion Sacks, our yellow Protoss player down in the bottom left. And up in the top right hand corner is our blue Protoss player, Book. I'm Excel. And I am Gunter, and this is. Oh my god, which round is it? I forgot. This is the buy round, I believe. The buy round, when this is. This is the buy round of the inaugural Southeast Asia Esports tournament. And while this game gets underway, we'd like to throw out our shout out to cyberthor.com.au, it's PCs built by gamers for gamers. Check them out, they're a great group, they're sponsoring this tournament, I'm trying to get this off the ground. So... Highlands going down almost at the same time, Line X just in there a second before. And would you believe that their timings at the very beginning of the game are about the same? Surprising, right? Especially in a Protoss v Protoss, you generally see a lot of variation. Yeah. At least, you can. Sometimes you don't see any variation at all. Sometimes they forgate each other forever and ever and ever. But sometimes it's fun to watch, because um, the thing about watching Protoss players is micro. Especially when they're forgetting each other. Unit micro will completely change the outcome of any fight. They have the same units, so whoever's micro is better will win. We are of course on uh, Zelmarga Caverns, which is the first map for the first game of every series in this tournament for some reason, but then it's loser picks after that. And I guess the reason they wanted to pick Zelmarga Caverns is because um, it's really balanced, it's not that big, and everybody knows it. it. It's a good, it's a fair map, and yeah, it's pretty pretty commonly played. Those probes missing each other in the middle, at the middle as they generally do on this map. Well yeah, and it's really strange the way the map's laid out. It's because of that, uh, that, that void in the middle. The probes, instead of kissing each other on the way through, they actually just go their different ways around that void. Lion Sack's getting a little aggressive with that uh, probe on that pile on that. And Book doing the exact same thing. <laughs> Always a little bit of harassment from probes, usually from Protoss players. They're probably the most annoying working units in the game. And what's that second building here coming down now? It's oh, a cybernetic squad. Right there, cybernetic squad going down now. And both players have been taking one gas, so pretty much identical build at the moment. Right, so it'll be interesting to see what they actually transition into, because this could be very foregate. It is looking a little bit that way. Lion Sacks having a bit of fun with that probe, just wandering out. Uh, now, expansion. here's another hotkey you need to learn, son. Hit V. Hold V. Oh yeah, vision! For Lion Sacks. Select a unit, hit V, and you can see what they see. So you can. Running out, then coming at that uh, pylon again. Indeed. So now we're just waiting to see what each player is going that to do. All oh. important warp gate research being done by both players now. Okay. Uh, Lion Sacks getting a second gateway before Book does. So that yeah. would be a bit of an advantage, also getting his stalkers out. Yeah, Book's place. getting his second gas, and it looks like he was saving up uh, minerals and gas for um, extra stalkers at the beginning there. It looks like he's going to go ahead and throw down a pylon out in the middle of his base as well. That stalker coming out, finding his probe. Oh, he was probably going to set up a forward pylon as well. But that's going to be denied for him now. Lion Sex. Running that probe away for dear life, trying to keep it alive. Now just holding his stalkers at the uh, front gate, warping out another stalker, so he's uh, getting some stalkers out really quick here. Yeah, warp gate research is about halfway down there. We've got a Twilight Council going up for Book, so it's, it's not going to be a four gate out of him. It looks like he's going to go for some Blink Stalker play. And we have two extra um, gates going down for Lion Sacks now, so if we'd like to check the warp gate count. And we also see that Book's got the units out on the map. We've got two stalkers from Lion Sacks coming up to this gold base now, going to chase away the stalker from Book, a third. Stalker is going to meet up with him, and he is bringing the uh, probe forward as well. And there goes Lion the forward pylon. Drop that forward pylon down there. Now dropping the upper gateway, so that's going to put him on four gates. Uh, book dropping another two gateways as well, so that's going to be three gateways versus four at this point. Yeah. Now there's the stalkers coming up that ramp. Through and the zealot. Yeah, so we're going, we are going to have a four gate out of Lion Sacks, but that forward pylon is probably just about to finish now. And now he's going to be able to start warping in, it's pretty good. And this is going to be really aggressive from Lion Sacks, and it's going to be really hard for Book to hold off because he spent those resources on the Twilight Council. And he's going to go ahead and get Blink straight away and try and counter this, but it does not look good for it. Warp gate research is done though, so it's going to allow him to get those reinforcements in fairly quick, which he will need with that forward pile. I'm probably going to be spewing out reinforcements for Lion Sacks. Well, yeah, the same is true for Lion Sacks as well. It looks like he's actually not going to commit to it. He's throwing down a second gas now. Here comes the warp in now. Four stalkers coming into that pylon, and that is a pretty scary force to deal with. That is a lot, but the ramp is quite an advantage, and he's got that sentry out, so that will allow him to force field and buy himself some time. He does have enough energy for that force field that as well. That probe is going to suicide, but he will see that those stalkers are down there. And there is a lot, and I think Lion Sack should actually try and commit to this now that it's 
pretty bad force field placement, there actually might be enough space at the bottom of that ramp for their stalks to get up. So it looks like there is book warping in some more reinforcements. So at the moment we've got uh, seven stalkers apiece, but one sentry for book. Right, so it looks like Book's actually going to be able to hold this off now if he's got those sort of those sort of forces out. Lion Sax is going to go ahead and throw down a Robo. So that's going to really help with some uh, Immortals or maybe even some Colossus. That's not something I necessarily agree with. I think if you're going to go for the Foregate, you should be warping in Stalkers and trying to bust up that ramp, even with the Sentry there. Well, see, I think he's just a little worried that the Book's force will overwhelm his and he just really doesn't want to lose it at this point. Book poking his head down that ramp, doing a bit of damage to that Zeal. Right, so now because the line sacks is committed... Ooh, offensive blink, he's going for it. May have been a mistake, those zealots are going to soak a lot of damage in those swords and do a lot of damage. We're losing a few units here, nothing particularly crippling. That sentry's going to go down! Oh. oh no, it gets away. Doesn't have a lot of energy, but those force fields are all important in this sort of situation. Immortal now being built for line sacks. Now, before that attack happened, I was going to say, because Lion Sax committed uh, resources to the Robo and the Twilight Council, he wouldn't actually have enough forces to be useful up the front, and Book may actually, he probably actually has a better uh, economy. So we go ahead and look at the unit count there. It's you. Yes, I know that. Name. I guess Lion Sax is actually had on probe, so what the hell do I know? Be quiet. Anyway, <laughs> Lion, Lion Sax decided to go home. It looks like the income is about to be, uh, it's going to be equal for both players. Now, uh, Blink being researched now for Lion Sax. He saw that offensive Blink, and I think he did not want to be at a disadvantage, so he's getting his own Blink ready. Now, uh, Book 2 is moving across the map here with this uh, small force of Stalkers. Throwing that uh, Zelnaga Tower to get a bit of vision. And he does have his forward pylon going down as well, so that is going to help with the reinforcements. So it looks like this is just going to turn around, and Book is going to do a bit of a harass on Lion Sax. Yeah, but Lion Sax now actually seeming a lot smarter than I thought he was going to be, because that Immortal is almost out, and that's going to be able to hold off any Stalker aggression that Book throws at him. Getting those reinforcements up and ready. Book getting reinforcements in as well, so this could be very interesting. That sentry does have a decent amount of energy, whether it be for guardian shield or force shield. It's a very low health though, so it won't be many shots to take it out. And now Book's going to come up the ramp. Oh, Two immortals there are going to completely light the scope of course. Blink out, tries to save it, he's going to lose the sentry, that is a bad thing. Now these immortals are going to be able to go to town on these still. Pretty decent blink marker, but he is still going to lose the his entire force. Running back to some reinforcements, hoping to get some damage in, so maybe he can take out Lion Sacks Force. Oh, offensive blink! That's a bad blink, I don't agree with that idea. at all, unless he was trying to um, take out those immortals, and the shield is low on one of them, but I mean, it just did not work, and now the pylon is going to go down, and Book 2's attack is going to be completely shut out. Now Lion Sacks is going to need to take out these pylons, which he will do, and the broke. So Book now, in uh, having to retreat, those immortals doing their job perfectly, getting that extra damage in, and there are more immortals and some zealots being warped in, so Lion Sacks may be thinking about following up with an attack. No, I'm not sure, but I don't think either player was building probes at this point, so I'd like to have a look at the probe count again to see what our economies are like, and it looks like it's uh, 27 for Lion Sacks and 25 for Book, so they haven't actually built a probe at all since. Both players dedicating their resources to their army, I suppose. Hoping to break one another's forces. Oh, offensive blink there. You don't see that very often because it can be very dangerous if you offensive blink into the wrong place, you will lose a lot of stalkers. It can be dangerous to do, but that was a good choice because there weren't many stalkers out there and uh, Book 2 decided that he had to retreat. It's interesting to look at the supply counts now as well. Lion Sacks is pretty far ahead and Book is going to go ahead and try to throw down that expansion to get ahead again. Now Lion Sacks has a lot more stalkers and he has those immortal and he has those zealots, so he is in a much better position at the moment. That's a scary, scary force to go attacking with. Lion Sacks is building a warp prism? I don't know about that, but he may be doing something tricky with it. Book 2 uh, chucking down his expansion, which is going to get taken out by these if Lion Sax is smart, and, and I believe he is. And that is a really scary force. Blink Stalkers plus how many Immortals do we have? We have three. Three Immortals, three immortals now. And so. some there to back it up. No charge on those Zealots, so they won't get in too quickly, but they will soak a decent amount of damage. An offensive Blink there by Lion Sax on that one Stalker. That one Stalker did not see that coming. That was a bit of a waste of a Blink, but I don't think he's going to need it straight away. Oh, he's going to have ele elevated Ooh. those Immortals up into... Uh, Book 2's base there. Oh, I like that very much, and that Warp Prism is also going to give vision to the Stalkers are going to be able to wail on our Book Stalkers from below ground. Oh, the missing the Immortal Drop. Good blink up! That Immortal taking a lot of damage very quickly, but that's exactly what's there for, is there to take a lot of damage so that those Stalkers can do some serious hard hits. We've got a walk in from Book, and the front ramp is completely left open at this. Lion Sacks is marching straight off the front door, and this is all his now. He's got Blinks, he's got Immortals, he can go for it, he can kill these Stalkers, completely oppose. And those Stalkers are going to go down, and there is really not a lot more to do from this point. Both players expanding, but there's a GG. And then Book was moving up to a Dark Shrine. That's another thing I don't really agree with as well. I mean, it's just more resources just, you're not spending on Stalkers. And I mean, Book didn't know this, but Lion Sacks did have that Observer out. He knew he had a Robo, so he knew he had the capacity to get those Observers out, which 
pretty much neutralizes those Dark Templar. Alright, so Lion Sats goes up one game to nil, and we'll see you soon for game two.